Hey, this is Stephanie, and I'm back. Um, I would like to first say that I, I apologize for not being. This is a picture. I'm not camera ready because I was sick uh, a couple of weeks ago. So y'all know how that is, laying around the house here, not done. But however, I just wanted to get into the story time and be consistent with doing it. So um, remember, I, I asked the question. I posted a picture, and I asked the question. You can go back. What would you do if you find out after you just got married, four days later, that your husband was a, uh, attracted to same sex, not the opposite sex, which was me, but he was attracted to the same sex. And um, you go, you can go back if you saw that, leave some comments, ask questions, feel free. I'm not going to get offended because that was over two decades. Two decades ago, God has delivered me and I, he, I'm here to tell my story. It's my story. So uh, <clears throat> I want to talk about how we met. So like I said, over two decades ago, that's like 20 years in my early 20s. Um, I always worked and after I was the only one that was single in my family, whether it came to siblings, cousins, and maybe even in the church. I think I was one of the last young adults in the ministry to get married. So I'm working, you know, enjoying life. I was satisfied, y'all. I said I was saved, single, satisfied. And I was sanctified and minding my business. Um, I remember my sister and her husband had to go to her um, husband's father's funeral. So while going there, my sister had to sing. Um, she was known for singing. Um, so my brother-in-law met his brother, who he, he heard of but never seen. So he met his half-brother at his dad's funeral. So this young man wanted to came back to my sister house and wanted to get to know his brother. And you know, he was hanging out with his brother and my sister um, for a couple of days. So the thing I did was as I worked, because I would live by myself, I didn't have to cook y'all. Still don't have to cook. I do have to cook now, but don't like to cook. See, I was always spoiled when it came to cooking. But anyway, um, back to the story. I would go to my sister's house after work, about seven o'clock PM have dinner with which, whichever sister, whether it was both sisters or the other sister, hang out with the kids. You know, when you're that aunt, you don't have any children, so you're definitely that aunt. you playing with the kids, just having a good old time in the Lord. And uh, one day I saw this young man here, and he said, how you doing? And I said, how are you? And that was it. You know, I kept it moving. I'm not looking at him. I found out he was looking at me, but I ain't looking at him. I'm happy. I'm minding my business. So um, I think I went over the second time. Cause I, that's what I always did. And um, he was like, how you doing? I said, I'm fine. How are you? Still not thinking of tonight. Again, I'm not looking at you. And if anybody that really knows me, they know. If I'm not interested, I'm not interested. Point blank, period. And I wasn't thinking anything of it. Um, so um, <clears throat> I think maybe two or three days I didn't go to my to that sister house i had two sisters that live in the same building i also had an older sister that live on another block so maybe I, I went to her house i don't remember exactly or maybe i just went home but when i went back to this apartment building where my two sisters live my two younger sisters we were all real close so that's just how we had i can show up announced or unannounced i'm still gonna eat so um he was there and he came out of my one of my sister's apartment because they live across the wall from each other it was called the, my father and the church, they owned it. So we called it the church house. It was rented out to people in the church. So whether it was family, other members in the church, we called it the church house. So doors was always open, going from one sister's house to the other. And um, he came over and he said, long time don't see. And when he said that, I'm looking at him like, you talking to me? He was like, yeah. So I'm like, okay. Maybe I said, okay, but I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm giving off looks. I know that. <laughs> but um, after that, I heard my sister yell from her apartment while I'm in the other sister's apartment, get out my sister's face. I told you she's too old for you. So that automatically let me know that he liked me. So now I'm looking like, you know, whatever. He was not ugly, very handsome, well-dressed. Um, like I said, quiet director, could sing, but still wasn't interested right away. So now I'm, you know, going over there again and again. Um, back in the days, we went to Great Adventure all the time. The couples and me, because remember, I was by myself. But I didn't care. I was good. Couples going to Great Adventure, Red Lobster, 
movies. I remember going to the movies all the time with my brother and his wife because they knew I like action. So, I mean, here I am. I'm always like a third wheel or the odd board because you got couples and then you got Stephanie. So, I think the idea of uh, <clears throat> the four siblings being married, cousin being married, and maybe some of the other young adults in the church being married, when you see people couple and you see him, knowing that he likes me. So, do I like him? I don't remember. Yeah, I did. I did like him. Did I love him? I don't think I really loved him in the beginning. I think I love the idea of being married. I love, you know, the fellowship, the reading the Bible, the going out to eat, Sizzlers, Great Adventure, bowling, whatever you think of, skating. Um, that's why I always tell people you could be saved, you could be young and saved and enjoy life in Christ as well because there's things to do as long as you keep it clean. And that's what we were doing. But um, one day my older sister came and she, she always had a conversation with my dad. I didn't. <laughs> That's another story. But um, she came and she talked to the, uh, the young man. And she said, um, my father, remember my father, he was the pastor also. My father thinks that, well, a, a young, another young lady liked him in the church. Or either he felt in his spirit that they would be a match. Mind you, in his spirit. I'm not saying what God ain't saying, but he felt his spirit they would be a match. Immediately, the young man, which was my brother-in-law, brother, said, I don't want her. I want, and he, he said me, I want Stephanie. And um, so my sister said, well, you better go talk to him because he thinking about calling y'all up and seeing, seeing you know, having y'all in a meeting and see whatever, whatever, whatever. So he made his business to have a conversation with my dad, who was the pastor, not to get so-called permission but y'all know how it is you do have to get the blessings of the father the blessings of the pastor um so he talked to him um then he talked to me and that's it y'all what i realized he never talked to us together so i do know now i didn't know then that we didn't have the proper counseling um whatever they talked about they talked about when he talked to me the only thing he said was um do you like him i said yeah I had, I started like him after all that going out, hanging out, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, great adventures, bowling, skating, you know, all the good things, going out to eat, having fun, laughing, reading the word. Yes, I liked him at that time. So he was like, do you like him? Yeah. He said, um, you like a little older than him because I was like four years older than him or four and a half, four, four or four and a half years older than him. But he thought the guy, the young man was older than me because well groomed, well taken care of, very mature, smart a direct the choir, could sing. So he was like, he had no problem with it. I don't see no problem with it. So he announced it in the church. That's how he did it back in the days. And um, from there on, we're dating, we're dating, doing what we've been doing, eating out, eating in, laughing, fellowshipping, going out. You know, every day, couples day. Until um, <clears throat> one day, my sister was like, well, you know, uh, he told me to talk to y'all and tell y'all if y'all, because he knew we was hanging out. So, you know, sometimes fathers and pastors, they automatically think because people hanging out, then they may be committing a fornication or whatever. But we wasn't doing that. We was around too many people. So he said, well, you know, he said, he always threw that scripture in there. It's better to marry than to burn. So if you guys going to, you believe you are to be together, that we are to get married. So my older sister who planned everybody's wedding, everybody's baby shower, everybody's banquet. She was the coordinator of everything that was going on in the church. She began to talk to us to plan the wedding. Um, planning the wedding, working, coming back home, planning the wedding, working, coming back home, working, whatever, how you want to say it, planning the wedding, coming back home. Uh, I'm getting girls that I want in my wedding. I'm picking their colors. I'm picking my flower girl, who is my precious niece. Shout out to her. Jessica. <laughs> but anyway, um, when it was his time to pick his people, there was one particular guy. Every time he got on the phone with the guy, well, the first time I heard him asking why, the guy was like, he's supposed to be the best man, but then he changed his mind. He said, why won't you be in the wedding? So supposedly the guy said to him, I'm not going to be in the wedding because you just met her and you don't know her. So um, after that, uh, he still was like trying to get him to be in the wedding. You know, like, why, why not? Why, why not? 
story time part three um i think i left off saying where my fiance at the time he was um on the phone trying to get his you know group of men together for the wedding and um one particular guy gave him a problem i remember his name but of course i can't say it um first he said he was going to be in the wedding then he said he was going to be his best man. Then he said, no, I'll just be in the wedding. Then he said, I'm not going to be in the wedding. Then he wound up telling him, this is like three or four different conversations, that if you marry her, I will never talk to you again. So I, I noticed that every time my fiancé at the time would be on the phone with this particular person, that he would always get off the phone and be a little sad. So one day... You know, I stepped away from the crowd, the noisy house, the kids, the sister-in-laws, the family, you know, the fun fellowship. And I went into the living room and I said, what's the problem? Like, what's going on? Of course, I didn't say it like that. I was probably was a little bit more concerned, you know, a little bit more nicer. Like, are you okay? Um, he said, yeah. I said, well, what's, what's going on? He said, the friend told him that if he married me, he would never speak to him again. So me, not knowing what was going on, me always want, wanting to encourage people and just, you know, give that encouraging word and uplift their spirits, I went on to say, well, listen, um, if he don't want to be a part of this wedding, don't let it, you know, bring you down. I was, you know, letting him know that if this person say he's your friend, but he don't want to have anything, anything to do with the wedding, you know, then don't worry about it. He's not the friend that he say he really is. So back then, me being young and naive, you know, not knowing, you know, anything about um, homosexuality or gays or, or anything for that matter. I was just like a homebody. I stayed in the house around my mom. When I got a little older, I did spend the night with one of my best friends, like a family friend, but I spent the night with her a lot. Um, but other than that, I didn't hang out. Didn't drink, didn't smoke, saying that to say because my other sisters did. Not try to tell them, but you know, you always got that one that stays in the house, and I was that one. So I didn't know anything, you know. All I knew was house, school, church, and when I got saved, I knew God. But um, I didn't know what was going on. But all I knew is every time the fiance got off the phone, he was sad. And I began to encourage him and say, you know, don't worry about it. I don't know how, like, he got back on the, wound up on the phone with him and when, because it was over 20 years ago, but I remember seeing, like, a little tear in my fiancé's eye. So I'm like, okay, house was too crowded, we couldn't talk. Called him in the bathroom to talk. <laughs> he sat on the tub, and I was just leaning on the sink saying, like, what's going on? Like, what is it? Is there anything you need to tell me? Still not knowing, I, the Lord has gifted me with the gifts of discernment. Um, some of you may say that understand that gift. Well, why did your, your discernment didn't work at the time? You know, the Bible says love has a multitude of faults. So even if I wasn't in love, but the idea of getting married and loving the fellowship and just loving everything that was going on back then, um, I was not hearing or either I was ignoring or making excuses. So what the young guy told me at the time, the fiance, was that the problem was he started to not feel worthy enough to be with me because when he was in high school, he had graduated a year ago from high school before I met him. So a year ago in high school, he had indulged in sexual activity with this guy. Again, I know y'all going to come for me or however you want to come bring it, but that's my truth is I didn't understand the sincerity of it. I didn't understand at the time how he was indulging in it. I didn't understand that things happened to him and he began to love it. I only understood what he told me. He didn't feel worthy to be with me because of what took place a year ago. I began again to encourage and minister. I didn't judge him. I, I didn't, I didn't, that was my first time hearing it. I was 23, 24. That's young, especially when you're not in the street and you're not hearing or knowing knowing anything about it. And this day and time is totally different from 20 years ago. People are more out and open with that. No shade to anyone that just chooses to live the lifestyle 
or chooses that lifestyle or say that they're gay or however, that's between you. That's, that's, that's your prerogative. I'm not judging you. That's your thing. It's not mine. But um, anyway, um, I have friends that uh, live the lifestyle, if I'm saying it right, because some people get offended on how you say it. I had some family members that's, for the sake of uh, social media, that's like that. Um, and I don't judge them. I'm still friends with them. They're still able to come to my house. They, we still able to eat together, laugh, or whatever. So I just wanted to make that known. I'm just telling my story of what I've gone through. So anyway, when he told me that, I went on to encourage him. You know, oh, don't worry about it. Uh, my father always said, father and pastor, pastor and father, one person, always said, well, what's under the blood is under the blood. If, if he asked for forgiveness and God forgave him, that's the past. So I believe that was the past. That one time that he told me was the past. So here we are. We're planning a wedding. We get married. After that, I hear nothing else about it. Um, he had the guys to come out. I had a bridal shower. Um, everybody's going on planning a wedding. The only thing that we had to do was I talked to his uh, mother or the phone, I believe. But he took me to the town that he lived in, two hours away from me. I drove over there with his direction. And we met his parents met his um, grandparents, aunts, cousins, that went well. One particular person we had to meet was his pastor, the church that he was affiliated with before he came over and joined my dad's church. And he talked to the pastor while I was just hanging out with uh, somebody. Well, while I was there, he talked to the pastor. But then the pastor's wife and some other young lady was there. We were talking. You know, it was just making me feel welcome. And I felt welcome. Everything went well. Keep in mind, I didn't know what was going on. But when I found out later what was going on, of course, everything comes back to you. I remember the pastor saying to him, are you sure, such and such, this is what you want to do? Or are you sure? And the look that he gave him that I read it off was like, are you sure? Because I know what you're dealing with. This is me talking, what I understood from the look. The look was telling me later, I know what you're dealing with. Are you sure? Okay, I can't blame anybody. Fiance at the time said, yeah. He said, okay. So leaving, I felt like we had his pastor blessings, his parents' blessing, my pastor and parents' blessing. It was a go. Looking back then, I just want to say this, and I'll probably say it again. I really believe that if his pastor and if my pastor, who was my father, knew they should have sat us both down and told us both and talked to us both and then let me decide. Most likely, knowing me, I probably would have said no. That one encounter that he told me he had didn't encourage me to say no. But after learning later on that that's what he was dealing with for years, I would have said no. So um, basically, I married him thinking that he just had a little incident or a little situation. You know, he didn't get into it, didn't know what he drank, didn't know what happened. If he did tell me, I don't remember everything to the T, but I remember enough to know that I didn't judge him for the so-called one sexual act that he committed with the guy on the phone that was trying to persuade him not to marry me. I feel like, and I really believe in my spirit, instead of him really, really being concerned about me, I believe he was fighting for the fiance. That's what I believe. You would only have to be there. So uh, this is part two ending. Stay tuned. Again, you can ask questions. You can message me, comment. I'm not going to get offended. This is my story, and I'm here to tell it, and I'm telling it for a reason. Be encouraged. Be blessed. Story time continues. Um, I think this is part three, but however, this is uh, me telling my story on how I finally got married, only to find out about four days later that my husband was really not attracted to me. 
he was actually attracted to the same sex. So, okay, I married him knowing that he had one encounter, according to him, in high school a year before he met me. Again, just going over a little bit, me not understanding back then or really knowing if you want to call me naive, like you could call me naive. Um, I didn't know the sincerity of, you know, him doing something like that or, you know, how long he was doing it or the effect that it could have on a person. So, you know, I was encouraging him, like I said before, you know, don't worry about it. This is our time. God is blessing. And I was all for him, all supporting so we constantly, like I said, we're getting ready for the mar- uh, the wedding. The plans are going good. Um, I had a bridal shower. The young guys took him out. Um, everything was just going good. As far as I was concerned, it was my time to be blessed. You know, here I am, the last one out of the uh, my family, the Daniels clan, for those that know me, out of my family to get married. Um, Everyone was being a blessing to me. Everyone was like, you know, oh, what does she need? I mean, this wedding was paid for by everybody. And when I say everybody, all those that knew me or knew my mom, even some people that knew him, I only came out of pocket with $100. And that was it. Uh, I can try to find pictures. The pictures was destroyed. That's another story. Professional, professional, professional pictures. But, um... Anyway, let's get into it. So we planning for the marriage, um, well, the wedding rather. Um, okay, so I guess I can go on to wedding day. The wedding day is here. Um, everything that, you know, when you're going through stuff in the present, especially like me, I would notice looks. I would have looks myself. So a person that give off looks can pick up looks. And I would notice certain things, but... Again, you always just say, you know what? You don't have to say anything, Stephanie. This is your time. Just, you know, be cool. But I remember the wedding. Um, beautiful wedding. Um, all the, uh, you know, the, the bridesmaids and the grooms, men, whatever you want to call them at the time, they were all walking in. The, and um, I remember sitting, into a, sitting in a limousine and the song was playing, I Shall Do by... I think, yeah, John P. Key. Here I go, y'all. Wherever you want me to go, I'm willing to obey. Oh, Lord, please let me know. Nice song. Y'all should look it up. But anyway, the voice is not there. But it was a beautiful song, and you could just hear it so loud out in the streets. I'm in a limo just waiting to be escorted in by my pastor and my dad. And um, so it was just, like, beautiful. Um, when it was my time, I had my younger sister who was a praise team. She was a young evangelist, was because she went on to be with the Lord. But however, I had it special. I had her because she walked down the aisle by herself. I had her to go first. Just tell you, trying to paint the picture how the wedding went. I had her to go first because she had to get to her keyboard and be ready to play a song that the Lord gave her. The song was Thank You, Lord, but it was her version. And she would always actually sing this song when, uh, even when the Lord would move in the ministry and, you know, bless everyone. <clears throat> and excuse my voice again. I'm just trying to paint the picture so y'all can, like, get into it. So once I heard the uh, music, doom, that was my key. And she began to say, thank you, Lord. Whoa, thank you, Lord. I ain't trying to sing for y'all. Because like I said, the voice is not there. But I'm just trying to paint the picture. We are standing in this place to give you praise. Beautiful worship song that the Lord gave her her way. So, okay, we're coming out of the aisle. But as I'm coming out of the aisle, you know, my family was all on the left side. His family and friends and fellow uh, former church members, the church I used to go to in his town, was on the right side. So by the time I, you know, I'm looking left, right, smiling. Anybody know me? Y'all know I like to laugh and smile anyway. So that was easy because I was smiling for pictures, but I was also laughing at the faces of the people. That's just me like, you know, am I a joke up in here? But when I got to the altar and then when we finally turned around, now we're facing the congregation. Um, I remember 
one lady, and we laughed about it later when I went to attend the church that he used to go to. That's further on down the line. But I remember her face. She had her hand on her cheek. Her cheek. You know, you cross one arm, the elbow leaning on it, hand on your cheek. That was her posture throughout the whole wedding ceremony. And anybody that knew my dad, he did long ceremonies. He was like, you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit. We're not rushing this thing. So he taught, he preached, he did his thing during the ceremony. But I remember the lady's posture and her face was very serious. Not knowing why, I even brought that to my husband after we got married. Why was she looking like da 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 or whatever, whatever. Whatever excuse he gave, I accepted it, of course. Remember, this is our day. We're excited. Nobody's going to come between our happiness. But when I, you know, later on, after started going through some issues and seeing my husband for who he really was and the choices that he made in life, and then going back to church to, with him to serve God, and me and the lady got into conversations, I knew why she was looking. She actually told me she was looking because she was trying to figure out why were we getting married knowing she knew what his situation was so in other words although he told me it was one encounter a year ago in high school other people knew more than i knew so uh tune in for whatever part's going to be next i just wanted to get that out and i'll be back again like share comment reshare ask questions in the comment you can message me but anyway, it's gonna get it's gonna get good. So tune in and I'll talk to you later. So I um finally get married, only to find out about four days later, like I said before that, my husband was attracted to the same sex. He was not attracted to me, he was attracted to the same sex. Um I really found out the honeymoon. Okay, um, really, I didn't find out, like, for sure, for sure, but during the honeymoon, you know, I mean, he was a virgin, I was a virgin, but the way he was acting, I mean, <laughs> I did expect more, so I come out with my little, you know, lingerie on, he had his two-piece silk, satin, whatever you want to call it, and, you know, a nice little pajama, pajama set or whatever, and um, he was being really weird, like, more like shy and I mean, he was like walked in, walking shy like a female would do. And I'm looking like, wait a minute. I mean, I wasn't even that shy. I'm just like, you know, I was shy. Didn't know what to expect, but he was like really like, you got a whole pair of shorts on and a shirt, like, come on. But anyway, um, stuff started, you know, getting weird. You know, again, you always, you're happily married. You think you are, you just got married. So you block it out. You make excuses for things. You begin to make excuses because, you know, you're already married now. But I remember what happened was um, I had a sister, my very close. All of my sisters and I are close. But one particular one, we just very, very, very close. And I had gotten married July 22nd. She was married before me July 27th. So it was their second or first year honeymoon. So now, because it was their honeymoon and it was my first, you know, my first time marrying, we agreed to go on like, you know, I don't know if everybody's familiar with the Poconos, but some are the oldie but goodies. Like, everybody used to always go to the Poconos, so we went and had like a duplex townhouse at the Poconos. We spent like four days there, and um, we everybody had their own entrance, you know, like they had their apartment upstairs, we had ours downstairs, you know, so whenever we were together, well, we came together, me and the husband, at the time, you know, we had our own private part, you know, area. They had their own private area. Just like having a duplex apartment house or townhouse. And um, so you guys know how it is. So um, <clears throat> that was okay. We said it was fine. You know, we was all close. We didn't mind hanging out together. It's just that when it was time for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, we hung out together. We did some activities together. But for the most part, when it was time to take it down for the evening, we had our own areas and we were to ourselves. And that's what I noticed. When we were all together, he was fine. Um, hanging out with the brother-in-law, hanging out with the sister-in-law. Uh, my sister at the time had two children. Um, but when he got with me, it was a whole different thing. 
So, y'all, I'm keeping it real, sis, keeping it real. We came together. I don't remember the first night doing anything. I think we made the excuse of, you know, being tired from the wedding, traveling up to the Poconos, talking, cuddling, whatever. When I woke up in the morning, there was no husband. <laughs> no, like, come on, like, where you at, right? I mean, again, I was a virgin, but I'm not stupid, you know what I'm saying? So, um... <clears throat> he was not there. He had gotten dressed. He was upstairs hanging out with the brother-in-law and the sister. You know, I didn't say I don't I didn't say anything. I know I was thinking things. I always told my sister stuff. I don't remember exactly how that went, but just to let you guys know, nothing happened. Um, so finally, second night, something happened. But I'm gonna keep it real. It was a one-time thing at the Poconos, and it was really quick. Like. Again, I was a virgin. It was my first time, but come on. Male, female. I, I mean, come on. <laughs> I knew better. One time and really quick and fast. Okay, that was one. I think it only happened one time at the Poconos, y'all. After, after the Poconos, we went back to his hometown to spend time with his family because he wanted to revisit the church. So now we're there. Um at one of his cousins' house. She was really a nice person, for the, just for the record. Um, if she ever sees us, thank you for always being kind to me. So although he was struggling with the lifestyle, and I say struggling because he was back and forth, back and forth. One, one minute he was like that, the next minute he didn't want to be like that. So because of that, it didn't stop his family from being kind to me. So we at his cousin's house. Me and her had a lot in common. Like, you know, serious for the Lord, no nonsense. And even just talking about the word and everything. So, you know, fine. Um, we uh, take it down at night. Okay, something happens. But I had to initiate it. <laughs> and that was even quick again. So I tell you no lie, and I'll probably repeat it again. I could count on one hand how many times nothing happened. <laughs> so um, uh, we're there, um, whatever. You know, always it's always fine as long as there's a crowd around. Whether it's male, female, family, close family, friends, everything is fine. But when we're by ourselves, there's always like that tension or that, you know, uncomfortableness with him being with me. And I'm like, okay, you know, so now I'm starting to pick up on things. And now my eyes is open. It's funny how, not funny, but you know, it's, it's how, you know, that's just a word that we use. How while we were engaged and preparing for the wedding and hanging out, I didn't really see all that. I saw what I saw, asked my question, he answered me, and I took that as it was. But now I'm starting to see, you know, different things, and the spirit of discernment is in operation. And I believe it was there before, because God don't take away any of your gifts. The Bible says love has the most tools of four. So I'm saying if I'm in love, if I was in love, or even just like I said, in love with being married, or the fact of being married, you know, <clears throat> it was... I wasn't seeing what I needed to see, even though God was showing me the red flags or allowing me to see. So, uh, it's, or make an excuse because you, you know, when you don't know, you don't know. And that's my story. But um, after that, so we go to the church to visit that he used to go to in his town that he was originally from. And um, I noticed, you know, because now I see, you know, him not, you know, interacting with young guys. No, he was. He was actually having a conversation with them, but then he had looked for his face. He wasn't comfortable. And I know now, even as a speaker, because if I don't know something, I'm going to ask questions. I want to understand. After the crying, but, you know, stopped, I wanted to understand. So, you know, after he talking to the uh, old friends that, you know, he knew and some of the other young guys coming to the church, living the same lifestyle he was and being, you know, outward with it, I knew there was a problem. And what happened was, right after church was over, he was like, come on, let's go. I'm ready to go home. We supposed to go back to his mom's house. Like a, It was like an hour away from where we were at. But instead of we going to his mom's house, we went back to New Jersey where I live, where we were living at the time. So um, um, he was just like, come on, I'm ready to go, but never said why. Okay, again, you know, we newlyweds. We getting to know each other more, you know. Because now we're together, but I'm over, I'm looking. So we go home. Um, 
I, I like to paint the picture. My bedroom was all made up. My mom, you know, like I said, everybody was excited for me. Uh, whatever gifts we had, my mother had them all unpacked, stacked on the couches, uh, stacked away in corners. Whatever we got for weddings and all the gifts and stuff, all the cars was in one place. Um, everything, the bed was made up. It was just nice when you walk in. Thanks, Mom. You know, she did that out of excitement. Everything just nicely, neat, and clean. Okay, so we shower, whatever, whatever. We go to bed. We in the bed. First time together in our home. And nothing happens. <laughs> um, we were tired from the, the travel. So um, he decides, let's read the cards. You know, we got like so many cards. We newlyweds. Nothing really happened. We're in our own home, fresh bed, fresh linen, fresh uh, new negligees, and you want to read the cards. So we read the cards, cuddled, and went to sleep. Fell asleep. That night, I'm a dreamer too as well. I had a dream that my husband had two different sexes. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but I'm saying so you can understand. Uh, Behind him, we already we all know we have a rectum, but either on top of his rectum, in my dream, he had a vagina as well. And when I woke up and I looked at him, this is for real, I had the dream, rectum, vagina. Woke up, that's the dream, y'all. I woke up and I looked at him and I said out of my mouth, and it was like my spirit man saying, he's gay. That was it. Tune in for the next part as I take you on a journey of me being married and finding out that my husband is attracted to same sex. So I finally get married only to find out that my husband was gay. I left off by telling you about a dream that I had. And just for the record so you guys can know that God always used me in dreams. But again, you know, when you're in love or you think you're in love or your focus, you know, is on something else, you don't really, you know, you're not going to really pay attention or tune into what God is saying. But this particular time with the dream, um, that's when it really started. I felt like my eyes was really open spiritually and naturally once I got married. Once we slept in our own beds together. And excuse my voice, I just want to be consistent with you guys. I'm a lot better than I was weeks ago. I might be eating too much ice. But anyway, get into the story, okay? So, again, now I'm having a dream. And I know in my spirit that it's from God. But I don't know what to do. And I've been, and remember, I'm 24 years old, so I was new to the dreams. I knew when I had a dream. I knew when it was of God. And I also know when I have a dream where, you know how you just sleep too much or maybe something's on your mind? I know the feeling when the dream is from God. And all I did was just started crying. And I called my older sister and I told her about the dream. She tried to comfort me and say, well, maybe this or maybe that. I kept saying, no, I know it's of God. Now, back then, as I get into the story even more, you'll see God has been showing me things uh, in dreams. Like nothing that this young man, well, the husband at the time, did, it, it didn't get past me. I would dream it or I'll just... You know, people will come around and I pick up on these spirits. And that's one of the gifts that I have. And, um, I mean, like, I would, like I said, I'll just cry. And I was just, like, really angry. I was more upset. Because I'm like, why is God showing me this? Of course, now that I'm delivered and that God has brought me out and, you know, I'm over it. Um, what God revealed to me was, um, I think he was, like, allowing me to see things. I'm going to say, when God do show you dreams, it's, you're supposed to pray. But some dreams are for warnings. And I believe that was my warning. Because if I had a, if all the stuff would have just hit me, like, head on, you know, like, straight up, with no type of warning, I could have had a nervous breakdown or lost my mind. I know guys, you know, people today may say, oh, not me, I would have just left. These days are different from 20 years ago. Um, that's my opinion from, you know, where I was and where I'm at now. Um, everybody wasn't so free to live and do what they want to do. They may have been doing it, but they wasn't so open about it. So, yes, I was embarrassed. Um, I was hurt. I was mad. I was angry with God because I felt like he could have showed me all of that then. 
But see, remember, I wasn't, I wasn't in a place to receive. I was too excited about preparing for the wedding and going out and hanging out. So anyway, I called my sister. Um, she tried to say, you know, she tried to uh, come for me or whatever. And that's been going on, you know, throughout the whole marriage that, that I was trying to hang on to him. I had another dream one time that me, my father was talking about me to a group of church members. And me and my father never been really close. That's another story in itself. And I woke up angry about that. And my father had a, uh, in the church, they had a restaurant. And so, um, when I went to the restaurant to, and me and this young lady was working, I said to her, I said, you know, last night I had a dream that my dad was talking about me and was laughing. And um, in the dream, he was literally talking about me. You know, instead of comforting me and giving me the word and, you know, doing what a father or a pastor is supposed to do, he wasn't doing that. That's because we wasn't getting along. Um, but to confirm the dream, when I told a young lady, I dreamed that my father was talking about me to a certain group of people. And in the dream, he was saying, he hoped I just wasn't accepting what uh, my husband was doing. And I wasn't. I was just being quiet. I was hurt. I just was on mute. I was shocked. But um, she told me, the young lady was like, you know, he was just, whatever I told her, she confirmed it and said, he was just talking about you. And I just went into tears. Like, again, God showed me, she confirmed it and went on to tell me more. So um, stay tuned. I'll be back with another video. I'm going to go into my manuscript because I don't want to give too much, but I'm going to give you guys enough to understand that um, I was really bound by the lies of my husband. But God put me out. So just stay tuned and I'll be.